The iMac is Apple's all-in-one desktop Mac, but that comes at a cost, a huge cost. And I've been sitting here wondering, could we actually beat Apple at making a better value Mac setup for that exact same price? And the answer to that came out a lot muddier than I was expecting. So before we compete against the iMac, we have to understand what makes it great in the first place. So let's scoot backwards and get closer to the one right behind me. This is an M1 iMac, so it's a little outdated at this point, but like 95% of it is the same, except for some few minor features that the new ones have. But physically, aesthetically, and functionally, very similar to the latest iMac. The iMac comes in an all-in-one package. It's a monitor, speakers, computer, webcam, mouse, and keyboard, all in a simple and easy to understand package. You literally just open the box, plug it into the wall, and you're pretty much good to go. You don't really have to think about it beyond that. It's great and saves you so much time because you don't end up becoming the person that has to explain things to relatives who blow up your phone asking for tech support at the most minor inconvenience. And when you look at the direct specs of the iMac, there are things that are difficult to find in other computers or all-in-ones without paying an absolute fortune or going completely a different route altogether. And for all those different things that I mentioned about this iMac, Apple doesn't just take the crappiest version of each and slap them into the iMac or their MacBooks. They're all either decent or pretty good. But see, that's also one of the biggest issues that I have with the iMac. Apple decides everything. You get what you get and you can't complain. And sometimes that's a very good thing. I mean, scour your local electronics store's website for their all-in-one offerings. It's kind of sad and not very competitive at all. And in this situation, the iMac looks absolutely amazing in comparison. I mean, I get it. It can be so much easier to just buy a good laptop or tablet as a family computer nowadays. So all-in-one computers already kind of serve just a niche need. So obviously we're not going up against the iMac with another all-in-one device. Instead, we'll look at a different Mac whose sole purpose is for us weirdos who didn't want an iMac the Mac mini. I just dropped a video about my experience on it, so check it out if you wanna learn more. But basically, this is what would happen if you extracted the brain of an iMac and shoved it into a tiny, cute little cube because it's just basically the bare necessities of a computer. It sells for way less. It costs $600 USD versus the iMac's 1300 USD. All right, so this video is done, right? Done in four minutes flat. N no, now we're stuck with a $600 brain with no arms, legs, mouth, ears, or eyes. We have to find everything to make it compete one-to-one -one with the iMac. So to compete, we'll need several things. A nice monitor, speakers, a webcam, mic, mouse, and keyboard, all to just match what you get with an iMac. I tried to find the best combination that I could get to either match or beat Apple in specs and usability, and it ended up a lot harder than I thought. So first, Let's try to stay within the confines of the walled Apple ecosystem. And if you do, you'd find a solution super quick. The nice and shiny studio display. Oh, it's such a pretty screen. It has all the features we're looking for. It's all glass and metal, but when you add it to the cart with the Mac mini, okay, yeah, that's way too much over the budget. Instead, let's try outside of our walled garden then. And here is what I came up with. This is the iMac. Wait, no, that, that's copyrighted. This is the iMac mini Max my version of an iMac alternative that in a lot of ways is better than the iMac, but in a lot of other ways, actually not as good as the iMac at all. So let's place the two side by side and play spot the difference. The iMac has a 4K 24 inch display. This goes up to 500 nits of brightness with 100% of the DCI P3 color gamut. In human terms, that means the screen is small, but pixel dense, gets bright, and displays a ton of different colors. And to be honest with you, no display under a thousand dollars matches this spec for spec. And the one that does is this, a monitor that LG and Apple made specifically for Mac. And that device is over five years old and already out of our budget. So for this setup, I went with the BenQ MA270U. Why? Because I had it laying around after I did a sponsor spot for them on a completely different video. This video isn't sponsored by them at all, but I also picked it because this monitor is almost as good as the IMAX. It's a 4K monitor that gets almost as bright and covers almost the same color space, but it has one neutral difference and three major benefits. It's a matte screen, so less glare, but also has less vibrancy. It's 27 inches for more screen real estate, and the stand is super adjustable, which the iMac is not. And lastly, because it's a standalone monitor, you can plug in other computers, 
gaming consoles, streaming boxes, all directly to this monitor, unlike the iMac. The iMac display is by far its nicest feature, but it's also a very limiting one because you can't easily find more monitors that match it in both specs and appearance if you ever wanted to add additional monitors to the iMac. I think the trade-offs we did are pretty fair and we got pretty close to matching it. But let's also be 100% real here, the iMac aesthetic looks a lot better and has pretty color options if that's something that you really care about. That's not something that you can easily do with third party monitors. Okay, instead of focusing on just how good the iMac looks, let's move on. What about webcam? The latest M4 iMacs have a 1080p center stage webcam, which means it follows you around when your body moves to a different part of the frame. Luckily, lots of dedicated webcams integrate this same feature in their software too just called something else, like this, the Insta360 Link 2C. This is a decent looking 4K webcam that has a nice little privacy cover when you're not using it, while also giving you a lot of customizability within its software for all of its additional features. The Link 2C also has a little built-in mic, which satisfies our mic requirement, although this mic sounds just just okay. And if you rarely need a webcam, you can save even more money by just using your iPhone as a webcam for your Mac. I don't suggest that as a long-term option because there may be instances where your phone needs to charge or you need to use it for other purposes. The iMac has some pretty nice built-in speakers and we could honestly do the same thing with our setup and just use the monitor speakers, but they sound terrible. So instead I opted for these, the Creative Pebble Pro. These are cheap speakers that plug right into the Mac mini or through Bluetooth for $50. And there's even the non-pro version three, which removes the honestly unnecessary RGB lighting and higher power output for an even cheaper price. Let's be real here. These speakers sound better than the one that was built directly into the monitor, but they're far from the best. The bass is okay and the looks are polarizing, but for this price, I really can't complain. Here's a quick sound test for you if you want a general idea of how these speakers sound. Okay, with every iMac purchase, you get a magic mouse and magic keyboard that color matches whatever iMac color that you picked. And on the higher tier models of the iMac, you get a magic keyboard with Touch ID. This is super cool and is the only way to buy those color matched iMac accessories. So if you really wanted to get the exact same keyboard and mouse as this iMac exactly, you can buy the dull silver versions or black versions of them on Apple's website, but they are pricey and really only work best with Apple products that Apple ecosystem, right? So instead I opted for these, the MX Anywhere 3S and the MX Keys Mini. These are long lasting Bluetooth mice and keyboards that have support for Windows and Mac, doesn't have an awkward charger placement and can pair and swap between three different devices. Also, it feels pretty decent to type on and the mouse feels nice to click. They also come in different colors just in case you don't wanna end up mismatched like me. These are typically my go-to recommendations for anyone who's looking for a mouse and a keyboard whether it be Mac or PC, because they make such great productivity focused accessories. You really can't go wrong with them and I much prefer them over Apple's offerings. Okay, so with the iMac, all the things that I just mentioned are already built in. Because of that, it integrates into the OS really well. You can press a button on your keyboard or click in the menu bar and you can control the brightness and volume, just like that. But when we use these third party accessories and want something seamless, it's a little bit more complex. Like for example, monitors. For most monitors, you can't just adjust brightness directly from Mac OS, which I think is stupid. But with an app like Display Pilot that BenQ has for this monitor or Better Display for most other monitors, you can get full brightness adjustment directly on your Mac instead of fiddling with little joysticks in the back of the monitor. Why is this sort of feature not standard? Who knows? Same with the speakers. The iMac speakers volume control is directly on the iMac. And luckily with our Creative Pebble Pro USB-C speakers, we can plug it in through USB-C and adjust volume just like you would 
any other device. While the keyboard, mice, and webcam work directly out of the box, to access all of their suite of features, you might have to download the manufacturer's software. So it can get a little bit more annoying and painful to troubleshoot all the issues with these third-party accessories. But hey, you get way more control over their features because of that. All right, so personally, I think everything ended up pretty nice. But overall, when we look at the numbers, how did we do? And drum roll please, we overspent. Well, sorta. I know, I mentioned MSRP at the beginning, and obviously the Mac Mini, all the accessories, and even the iMac will go on sale from time to time. So what if we adjusted for sales? What if we looked at common sales prices for everything and, huh, we're still over budget? Did I make this video for nothing? Did I just waste 10 minutes of your time? Well, it's a lot more complex than that. This entire comparison we've been doing has been totally wrong. See, Apple sells two completely different versions of the iMac. The difference is the $1,500 version is actually more in line with what you get with the Mac mini, spec for spec. See, the $1,300 version has way less USB-C ports, it doesn't have an ethernet port, and it's actually slower than our cute little $600 Mac mini here. So if we're going to be fair, we have to use the $1,500 one as a benchmark. Okay, awesome. So how do our numbers look now? Now the prices are 100% basically at a tie with a little room for error based on random sales that may go on for either side. Okay, cool, we did it guys, we won. We built a better computer than the iMac for the exact same price. Fire everyone at Apple, Big Jim is moving in. But why does something just feel off about this setup? Well, that's because we didn't really replace what the iMac is. We only built a different computer altogether with similar specs. See, throughout this video, there were random features the iMac had that we just couldn't replicate or match at all. And I mean, look at this, it's a nice setup, but it's not as compact and as simple to use and as easy to clean up as something as dead simple as the iMac. These two things may functionally do the exact same thing, but they're for two completely different people with different needs. Think about the iMac like a typical fast food order. You order a combo, you get a burger, fries, and a drink, and you end up saving a bit of money than if you bought them all separately. But what if you don't like fries? I mean, I'll take them off your hands. Don't mind if I do. But you just bought something that you may not have wanted to eat, and so it just sits there. While what we did with the Mac Mini was ordering different items off the menu separately. It could cost more or less depending on what I wanted to eat, but I got exactly what I wanted. Nothing more, nothing less. So I think the conclusion of this video is a bit more nuanced than I originally thought. It really narrows down to what you personally value. If you're looking for the cheapest desktop you can get, get the Mac Mini. Use all the old peripherals you had laying around the house and you got yourself a very cheap, but fast map. If you want something dead simple that you don't have to worry about and just know it will work without too much fiddling, get the iMac and just call it a day. But if you want a fine-tuned, tailored experience that suits how you use your computer perfectly, it's gonna be the Mac Mini, Mac Studio, or even a custom-built Windows PC, depending on how spicy you're feeling. But what I put together here is just a sample of what you can do yourself based on your own needs. So if you want a better display, you can do that. If you want better speakers, you can do that. If you want better mice or keyboards, you can do that, as long as your budget can handle it. But at the same time, I'm not saying you can't do this with an iMac either, but then it makes all the things that come standard with the iMac a little unnecessary, and you just paid more for it upfront. So really know what you personally want. And the best part with going with a Mac mini setup like this, in four or five years, when you get a new one, you can just plop it in and use all the accessories that you already own, just like that, while outright paying for a new iMac could be much more expensive. But that's just my thoughts and experience trying to beat the iMac. What do you think though? What do you prefer? The clean and simple iMac with limited paths for customizability or a more versatile and cheaper Mac mini up front that might be a little harder to use and way more difficult to keep clean? Leave all that down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you all next time. Bye.